You know what's fun? Spending an entire night working on a video only to find out once you render it out that the audio sounds like absolute crap. So welcome to yesterday's Gunpla News, everybody, where we talk about new Gunpla developments that you've probably already heard about. I'm your host, Second Soundwave. This is Channel 2S. Let's go. So Dragon Momoko has once again gotten themselves in deep water. So as you're probably aware, if you've been following them at all a few months back, Dragon Momoko did have a few issues with the Chinese copyright police. Now fortunately it was something that they were able to sort out pretty quickly and easily, but there was a few days of panic in there where nobody knew quite what was going on. Well now they're back in trouble and it's, uh, it's a bit more serious this time. Last time they were able to sort out their problems by just paying a few fines, stuff like that. This time it's a bit more serious because Bondi and Sunrise themselves actually stepped in to take action against them. Basically, they raided their factory, confiscated all their stuff, and arrested the guy in charge. Now this does mean that their upcoming models, like the Blue Frame 3rd form, will unfortunately be more than likely cancelled forever. Which kinda sucks. However, when I kinda lean back and look at what Dragon Momoko's been doing recently just as a whole, I can't help but say that they did kinda have it coming. Cause here's the thing. Dragon Momokos made some very cool, fairly original kits. They made the Testament Gundam, which, aside from the frame, was pretty much all new material. They made the Akatsuki, which was, again, almost all new material, it just used a strike Gundam frame. And they made the Death Scythe Hell, which, as far as I know, is entirely new material. Even their metal build styled Strike Freedom and Destiny Gundam, while technically based off the Tamashi Nation's metal build figures, were still pretty different looking than what Bondi put out themselves. However, their more recent kits haven't been quite following that trend. Yes, the Blue Frame 3rd form is a Blue Frame form we've never gotten before, but here's the thing. That kit, that's not just the 3rd form. It also comes with the 2nd form parts. So in a way, it is kind of just a straight bootleg of the Blue Frame 2nd L with a few new parts. And then there's those Exia metal builds they've been doing lately. Avalanche Exia? Sure, that's pretty original, pretty cool. But the Exia repair set? That thing's almost a direct competitor with the Exia kits that Bondi's been putting out. It's an Exia Gundam, an Exia Repair, and an Exia Repair 2, all kits that Bondi's made, stylized in a way that's really not that different from the official Master Grade. Really, the only new parts in that whole set are the Repair 3 bits. That Blue Frame and Exia are the two most recent kits to come from Dragon Momoko, and they're also the two most bootleg-feeling kits they've done in a while. And I think that's a big part of why Bondi chose now to jump on them, because if they kept making more original kits, like the Death Scythe, the Testament may be going even further than that, they probably would have been fine. Alternatively, if they just released things like the Exia Repair 3 as option parts that would go on the official Bondi Master Grades, therefore increasing sales for Bondi and Dragon Momoko, Bondi would once again, probably be willing to turn a blind eye to them. But because they showed some indications of steering away from doing original kits and back into pretty much bootleg territory, they got hit. Or at least, that's my take on it. I could just be completely wrong. So in more official Gunpla news, let's talk about the Master Grade Province Gundam. There's a special finished version of it coming out soon, and there's not really a lot I can say about it at this point, but there are quite a few pictures of it, so I'll have those up on the screen right now. Basically, what you're getting in the box is a Master Grade Providence Gundam with some special plating on it that actually does look pretty cool. Now, I don't have any personal experience with the Providence Gundam, so I have no idea if the nubs are good or bad on this kit, and that's something you do kind of have to keep in mind with these style kits, because generally with plated kits or kits with any kind of finish applied to them on the runners, what pretty much makes or breaks them is how they're gated. Beyond that, you'll also be getting the extended funnel effects from the extended funnel effect set that they released a little while ago. And also, he's going to have that same Zaft Emblem logo stand that the special edition version of the Retail Providence came with, only now it'll be molded in a translucent red instead of the standard red of the original. Furthermore, if you just want to get the effect parts, they are re-releasing that Premium Bondi Master Grade Providence Gundam funnel effect set on its own around the same time as the special finish kit, so if you want to get one of those for your standard Providence, wouldn't be a bad time to do so. Now let's talk about the Perfect Grade Exia Repair. This is a premium Bondi add-on set that Bondi just showed off for their upcoming Perfect Grade Exia, and for the most part, I guess it looks pretty cool. However, there's one pretty big problem I have with this. On the smaller kits, like the real grade, like the master grade, it kind of made sense to mold the cape out of plastic. When you have a cloth piece on a kit that small, it's kind of hard to weight it properly so that it drapes like a realistic piece of cloth, and oftentimes it'll just look kind of weird. But on a kit as big as a perfect grade, I kind of think they could have gotten away with using cloth for that. So coming soon to Gundam Base Tokyo is something called Gunpla Next Phase. Now what Next Phase is going to be is it's going to be an area in Gundam Base Tokyo where they're going to show off new and upcoming kits. Now there's already something 
something kind of like that at Gundam Base Tokyo, but this is going to be a little bit different. So from what I understood of the press release, it seems like this new area will not just be for kits that they're definitely releasing, but also for just anything they might have on the drawing board. If you're familiar with the Tamashi Nations Festival that Bondi's other subcompany Tamashi Nations does, I'm expecting it to be something like that. Basically, they're going to tease you with 15 or 20 really cool looking kits, and then they're going to release three of them. Now maybe I am being a little too cynical here, but that's just how I see this turning out. SD Gundam Sengokuden is something that I pretty much never give any thought to, but Bandai has given me a reason to talk about it because they are doing some special kind of seed remaster, Thunderbolt animation color style recolors of a few of the more prominent kits from the line because apparently 2018 is the 10th anniversary of nobody's favorite Gundam series. Okay, that might be a little harsh to say because uh, some of these are actually kind of cool. Like this Cubelay right here. I think that looks kind of neat. I like the fans, I like the kind of headdress thing it's got going on. It's a pretty nice little design. Now the big problem with these style SD kits is of course while they do look cool here in these official images, there is a lot of painting going on here. But if you do put the paintwork into these, if you put the time into painting them up properly, they can look pretty cool. I'm actually very interested in this one set right here because not only does it have this pretty cool looking siege chariot thing, but you also get a little SD Asteron. And that's probably the only Asteron we're gonna get for a long, long time. But anyways, these kits are going to be coming out over the first few months of 2018, so if you are an SD Sengokuden fan, you got that to look forward to next year. And that was all of yesterday's Gumpla News. Thanks for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed this video, if you're new do consider subscribing, and as always, I'm your host Second Soundwave, and I'll see you next time. Take care guys.